Adobe Media Encoder is a wonderful application that comes bundled with After Effects. It allows you to pass off the rendering process to a separate application so you can continue working inside of After Effects. Now, it also has an added bonus in the fact that it has a ton of different presets, so you don't have to remember exactly what codec or compression is used for any specific kind of machine. To show you what I mean, let's go ahead and add our current H Plus Encoder project to Adobe Media Encoder. Let's make sure we have the H Plus Encoder project selected in our timeline, and then go up under Composition and choose Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. Now it's gonna take a second to launch, but what After Effects is doing is creating a subfolder inside the folder where we've saved our After Effects project. And in there, it's saving a temporary file that Media Encoder is going to use to save the information that we input. Now you should be inside of Media Encoder and you'll notice we have a bunch of presets. Let's work our way from the left over to the right. The first option has a pull down for format. If we click on that, we can choose some pretty general formats. There's H.264, there's MPEG-4, QuickTime, if you're on Windows, there'll be Windows Media. We could render image sequences. You get the idea. You can choose your overarching format here. And then within that format, there are a bunch of different presets in the next pulldown. So I'll leave H.264 selected. And then when we go to the preset pulldown for that, Notice I have different options where if I needed to render for an Android phone and tablet, I could choose a preset. If you scroll down, you can see the presets are pretty endless. Now, I'll just go ahead and click off of here. If you're not exactly sure what preset you need, you can look by device over here on the right. Now, before we jump into the presets, let's look at the next option here in our queue panel, the output file path. If you click on this, it'll go ahead and choose the folder that was created when we first launched Media Encoder. If we look in my exercise files in chapter nine, it's created a new folder. That's because my Media Encoder original After Effects project was saved in this folder. So it created a new folder where it saved the temp file and that's where it's trying to save our new file. We could change the name up here, although I'm just gonna leave it the same and click save. Now let's go over to the right and look at the preset browser. The preset here allows us to choose more than one option and we can browse by specific device. So let's look at broadcast options. If I open here, I can choose one of the Avid DNX HD codecs. Let's say I wanna encode this to this 720p option. Well, if I wanna use one of these presets, I can go ahead and just click on this and drag it over to the left. Notice now I get this highlight box underneath my latest queue. When I let go, now it's gonna add that as another format for options for encoding. If we look to the lower left at the encoding panel, notice there's nothing happening. This panel will update when we actually start the render queue. Down at the bottom, we can create what are called watch folders. Watch folders are a lot of fun because you can specify an individual folder on your hard drive and any time you save a project to that folder, Media Encoder will automatically launch and start encoding that project. You can even output files there and it'll re-encode those files or transcode those files to other formats. To specify a watch folder, you can just click the plus button and then navigate to the folder you would like it to watch. I'm gonna click cancel because we're not going to do that just yet. If we go up to the top middle, this is where the play button is that'll start our render queue. Now I wanna go ahead and render these two formats, so I'll click the green start button. Now we'll see the encoding process is started in our encoding area. And then since we have two different files going, we'll get previews for each file as they're created. Now we can navigate to our output path. I'm just gonna press command tab to jump to my finder and here I'll go in my media encoder area. And here's my MXF I created from the Avid project. And here's my MP4 file. If we go ahead and double click, it'll open that file in QuickTime Player and I can go ahead and preview it. And as you can see, we have a successfully encoded file. So that's Adobe Media Encoder. And I tell you what, with all these presets, I send most of my projects off to Media Encoder because it makes life pretty simple.